Hello, everyone. Good um, evening in Hong Kong and good afternoon in Prague. My name is Bernice from International Association of Theatre Critics Hong Kong. And this is our second talk uh, in collaboration with um, ATI, Arts and Theatre Institute in Prague. And um, this is really our pleasure and honor to be able to have this great opportunity to be able to gather uh, a group of uh, young and creative uh, uh, creators here in, in uh, online so we could uh, have a chance to share about uh, interesting uh, experience about that digital um, exploration and also experiment uh, in the year I, last, I, I mean, in, a, in the year of COVID, because everyone knows that this COVID, although it brings a lot of like a uh, set aspect um, of our life, but at, on the other hand, it also creates a lot of like um, inspiring opportunities for us to know more about um, digital arts. And for this particular session, this second talk of our collaboration with ATI, we are going to share with you a digital leap in performing arts. And this is an interesting uh, project, uh, a training program that uh, our guest host, Martina, is going to introduce further uh, for us about this uh, interesting program. And I have to say, we have three young emerging young, uh, uh, young artists with us to share about their experience of joining this program. And also we, are, we have also invite um, William, um, a, a theater critics in Hong Kong here as a respondent later to share about his uh, thoughts and also comments about this project. And I'm sure that we're going to have a wonderful exchange in this uh, evening. So um, Martina, it's uh, our honor to have you with us as a moderator for this session. So over to you and thank you so much for having for helping us on this wonderful project. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bernice. Uh, good evening to all our hosts, guests and audiences in Hong Kong. Uh, and as it was said, it's the afternoon in Europe and today, we are not only in Prague, we are dispersed through uh, the whole continent, let's say, because uh, uh, we have colleagues in Prague, we have colleagues in Bratislava, in Paris, in London, and I am in Sibiu right now in the festival. So uh, it's really all Europe is represented to the, today or tonight. Uh, as it was said, I am Martina Petskova Cherna, and I will guide you through the whole uh, Show Must Go On online thematic talk series. And before we start, uh, I would like to thank again to the International Association of Theatre Critics Hong Kong, and especially to Bernice Chan for initiating this dialogue between this time European, not only Czech and Hong Kong performing arts organizations. Uh, in our talks, uh, we are reflecting the latest developments in performing arts in relation to the global challenges facing human civilization and the cultural sector, of course, as well. We are sharing examples of good practices and ideas that accompany the current changes in the live arts. And I very much hope that we are also inspiring each other, for example, to some new collaborations. In preparing the structure of this uh, talk series, uh, we have drawn on the activities that the Arts and Theatre Institute in Prague has carried out in direct response to the anti-pandemic restrictions in the last two years, but also to other challenges that are also valid for the cultural sector such as the climate crisis, transformation of today's societies, and of theater audiences, theater practices, and so far and so on. Uh, among these activities uh, we did uh, in the last two years, uh, I can mention the show must go on offline discussion and podcast series, which was discussed in our previous volume last week. And uh, I hope that uh, the recording is already available or will be available for those uh, who weren't able to participate. The second activity is the, the international training program Digital Leap for dancers and contemporary circus artists, 
which we uh, implement with six other European partners and which is going to be presented today. And for next Wednesday, for our last uh, meeting or volume, uh, we will get back to the very basics of performing arts online cycle, which was a cycle organized in spring 2020 as a direct response to the first wave of the SARS COVID-19 pandemic. All these series uh, have been produced by the Perform Check team uh, at the Arts and Theatre Institute. Uh, which is a state organization established by the Ministry of Culture and in collaboration with our international partners. And uh, it's my pleasure that uh, some of them will be present uh, today as well. Um, Perform Check uh, is uh, a brand uh, which is used by the International Cooperation Department and uh, we provide a range of activities related to international cooperation of the Czech performing arts scene, which means theater, dance, and contemporary circus. And we include also productions and artists uh, working with multidisciplinary approaches. Perform Czech, as you see now on your screens, is also an information portal in English for performing arts professionals uh, that provides a lot of information and mediates uh, contacts and propositions for international collaboration. And uh, we are lucky to be part of many professional networks and projects and activities that link our artists uh, and academics and uh, other professionals with international communities. And one of these projects uh, will be presented uh, right in a moment. Um, so today, uh, we shall focus on the topics addressed by the Digital Leap Project. As I said, it's not only our initiative. Uh, um, the main coordinator of the project uh, is Dance Info Finland. And uh, the project is implemented together with partners from the Czech Republic, which is us, France, Lithuania, Norway, Spain, and Sweden. And uh, it truly grew from the changed condition, conditions, uh, not only in life arts, but also in international cultural cooperation and mobility, which brought the COVID pandemic and the post COVID situation. Um, all of our organizations uh, involved in the project Digital Leap uh, work with promotion of the performing arts scene, and of course, uh, not only the performing arts and artistic practices were very much influenced by the pandemic, but also uh, the international cooperation as such, I mean, in the cultural sector. Digital Leap, um, as Bernice mentioned, is an international training program funded from the Erasmus Plus program. And uh, it is focused really on circus and dance artists. Uh, so uh, it offers to them learning opportunities for deepening their understanding of different digital tools and virtual platforms. Uh, the whole project uh, lasts uh, more or less two years and it consists or the main activities are four learning modules. These modules are always five days events taking place in uh, different locations. And they provide uh, theory and training in digital platforms from different perspectives. Uh, they offer to the involved artists uh, an opportunity to develop uh, their skills in digitization, in use of uh, new technologies, uh, of course, also to network because uh, artists from seven countries are meeting in the in the training modules and also to meet experts from different disciplines, uh, which act as teachers, mentors and facilitators of the training modules. So you are now, uh, you saw uh, the web page of the project uh, and uh, I mentioned that um, uh, in frame of the project, we organize four modules. 
And uh, we defined uh, at the very beginning in collaboration of all the partners, the topics for the four modules. The first one is promoting work in digital and virtual environments. So it's rather like uh, marketing, promotion, and uh, these kind of topics. The second one is uh, adapting live work for digital and virtual platforms. So it, it's really focused uh, on creation and use of uh, these technologies and tools uh, in uh, artistic creation. The third one is focused on distribution of works, uh, artistic works and products or projects on digital and virtual platforms. And the last one is uh, connecting with audience by digital and virtual means. Of course, uh, in each of the modules, uh, these topics overlap a little bit, but um, uh, the main focus of each of the module is defined through the topics uh, I've mentioned. At this very moment, we are in, uh, in the phase when we have organized two of the four modules. Uh, the, the very first one was uh, held in Prague and the second one uh, in Vilnius. And uh, in the upcoming uh, discussion with our guests, uh, we should focus mainly on the experience uh, uh, which was brought through these uh, two first modules. Uh, we are now uh, preparing the second two modules. One of them will happen in Spain and the last one in France. So I hope to know also from Paloma uh, what, is, uh, what is connected with the preparation of the upcoming modules. So uh, let's turn now, I will stop my monologue here and let's turn to our guests. Uh, um, today's uh, guests uh, are both. Uh, the participants and the organizer of the digital leap modules. So, and sometimes they have both roles. Uh, so I am really curious about their feedback uh, to participation and organization of the, of the modules. And they represent uh, various uh, European countries uh, as well. And uh, through that, a truly international context, which is one of the aims of the project as well, like to connect internationally and to exchange um, experience. Uh, the professional background of our guests today is uh, culture management in the field of performing arts or artistic practice or a combination of both. So I would like to welcome here Eva Urbanova, Milda Kershulite and Paloma Gonzalez. And uh, I'm coming to the first uh, question and introduction. Uh, so I will start with Milda. Uh, Milda is a project coordinator at Lithuanian Dance Information Center, which is a non-governmental organization dedicated to contemporary dance and circus and supports the artistic and cultural development in Lithuania. Additionally, she is a street dancer and she's also coordinating other international European projects than only digitally. So Melda, uh, would you please tell us uh, something uh, about your organization, about the Lithuanian Dance Information Center, and uh, maybe also to connect it uh, with uh, the change of dance practices during COVID and uh, post-COVID era? Uh, hi, everyone. Um... So uh, I would start with uh, what our projects in Lithuania Dance Information Center are, and we mostly uh, have these two separate, uh, two separate areas. One is the project which we create, and the other one is international projects. So uh, the project we create is New Baltic Dance, which is a contemporary dance festival. Uh, then uh, we have uh, Contempo, another contemporary dance festival. Uh, we also uh, try to promote dancers um, by giving them residencies. That's what we did during COVID. Um, and uh, as for international projects, uh, Digital Leaf is, of course, uh, one of the biggest uh, projects we are participating in. Um, we also do uh, these contemporary circus projects. Uh, for example, one of them is uh, this year. 
Um, it's a really, uh, really interesting digital project as well. And uh, we try to uh, do these uh, classes, uh, like intensive summer dance classes, uh, to uh, familiarize people with contemporary dance and where both professionals and amateurs can try uh, to learn and dance. So we have all these different uh, arrays of what we do and uh, we we try to manage everything and uh, be as wide as possible that's why uh, we are not only into um into i would say only dance but also like in also into contemporary service um, and digital leap is also uh, like one of the projects where contemporary service is also included and uh, as for the COVID, um it was pretty interesting because during COVID, we expanded our activities. Many people uh, would say that during COVID, it's usually harder to operate. But then we decided that we can actually switch this angle on which we operate, and we wanted to make it as wide as possible. And that's why we gave residencies uh, to dancers who couldn't have their spaces, who couldn't uh, get any funding during it. So we decided to uh, bring all these funds we have from different projects to fund the dancers um, and give them residencies. And then another thing which we did was move towards digitalization. That's why we're also pretty happy to be, not pretty, I'm really happy to be uh, in Digital Leap because it was also a project that was, um, that we took part in, like started organizing it during COVID. And then uh, another big project uh, is called Dance Plus City, where we uh, use these spaces, which are usually, uh, uh, which usually, um, sorry, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, uh, where we take, uh, yeah, uh, sorry. Uh, so uh, we decided to use these abandoned or uh, places that are being in use, which are really interesting in in architectural side, uh, and we decided to incorporate dance with it. So it was a project uh, which was a joint project with architectural funds. Um, and because those areas weren't used during COVID, we decided to bring those dancers to promote their work across the country and uh, have this effect on the society that people actually see contemporary dance because many people still, they don't uh, just turn on video see and then we made a contract with um, national television to show it all uh, around the different broadcast stations um, so I would like to uh, maybe Barbara could show um, one of the videos which was part of Dance the City project <laughs> Pakelkite savo rankas į viršų. So that's what we, that's how we switch from doing all these regular in-person activities and festivals um, to this broadcasting live, uh, live 
I received videos um, for promoting artists and familiarizing Lithuanians with uh, our contemporary art scene, contemporary dance art scene. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Milda. Uh, we will get back uh, to you, but uh, now we will introduce Eva. Eva is not a culture manager. She's a choreographer and dancer. Uh, she's born in Slovakia, and I'm not sure if she's still living in Prague, uh, she will tell us. But uh, anyway, she's a very international person uh, because she worked uh, and collaborates uh, with dance groups of various size, culture backgrounds, and professional experiences. Um, she performed in Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary, Portugal, Germany. So it's really a huge scope uh, of territories where she's present. And her solo, the, the Essence, won the second choreographic award and public award at the Solo Tanz Theater Stuttgart International Competition in 2021. Eva, can you tell us something about your uh, artistic uh, practices uh, and also connected uh, with uh, your uh, experience from the past uh, two years, which were really deeply hit by the COVID pandemic. Uh, good evening, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so before the pandemic, my artistic practices were uh, uh, mainly happening indoor, of course, in the black box. And there were a few times where I was part of the projects which were happening uh, in the gallery spaces. But the pandemic really changed this. Uh, so now you can see the uh, photos from my artistic practices during the pandemic. Uh, of course, what happened that the show started to happen outdoors. So the things were much more connected to the environment of the city or the nature, the topics. Uh, then what happened uh, before the pandemic started, I already made some um, uh, artistic international deals that we're going to do in 2020 and 2021. And because we could not travel, uh, everything has to happen online. So this is one project with uh, two dancers from Brazil. I choreographed the whole piece uh, online through the camera. So there were different cameras around them. And uh, then uh, and I think what happened was, all, of course, uh, premiering of the pieces which were happening inside of the theater, inside of the Black Post online. Um, it also brought me a new, <laughs> new perspective on how to capture a dance if it's not for dance for camera as a dance film, but uh, still keeping the essence of the theater space. Um, if I'm gonna go back to the work which I did with the Brazilian artists, um, as was mentioned in the beginning, uh, the pandemic brought a lot of sad and bad stuff, but also there was like open calls for international corporations. And we uh, took this chance, applied for this grant. So actually one of the corporations happened because there was this open call, which we could collaborate uh, virtually in different places in the earth. Um, uh, yeah, outdoor performances, uh, internet. Uh, there was also interesting, uh, there was also interesting uh, uh, cooperation with the dancers from the core dance from United States, which um, the working progress, which was also rehearsed and created through the screen uh, between um, us dancers in Prague uh, with the dancers in uh, United States was presented at the same time. So people could see uh, the screen divided in two halves and one dancer was on the right, one dancer on the left and everything happened virtually. Uh, and uh, there was also a very interesting project which I did with the Czech choreographer Jana Biterova with the help also of the Theater Institute where we would like to connect, uh, not as a professional dancers, uh, people to dance, but we were trying to create a project when people from different parts of the earth uh, could dance, to get, dance together. And uh, this also was uh, part of the festival in Czech Republic. So there was uh, one person dancing on one side of the uh, screen and then the other, but I, we were more trying to invite people who are not dancers or in, uh, in uh, arts involved. And um, 
yeah, I guess uh, that's it for now, how my artistic practices were during the pandemic. Thank you, Eva. Um, we will yet uh, introduce uh, Paloma's organization, but uh, you can already uh, think about uh, the first uh, reaction or question which appeared in our chat box uh, here. Uh, what is the difference between dance uh, video to dance video dance project from reality space to digital interface? So we will get back to this question in the second round uh, uh, because it's also connected uh, with the digitally project and the training modules. Um, Paloma, uh, would you please uh, uh, present your organization? You are rather connected uh, to contemporary circus and uh, to the network uh, Circo Strada. So please uh, tell us something uh, about uh, your organization, where you are currently working. And uh, just to say a few words about you, uh, you are currently finishing your master's degree in culture project management in France but you also have a really international background, so you can be more specific about it. Thank you. So hello, everybody. Uh, as Martina said, uh, quite international background because I'm from Puerto Rico, and I'm doing my master's currently in France and Dijon. And in the frame of my master's, I'm doing an internship with Arsena. And Arsena is the national center of six contemporary circus, street and theater arts. We are based in Paris in France. Um, we are fully funded by the French Ministry of Culture. The team is composed of around 25 people. And so what is our Sena? Uh, we are an organization that strengthens and supports the sectors, the three different sectors. And we have three main focuses around that. We share knowledge, we offer different uh, digital articles and multimedia resources in our website. We uh, give guidance and counseling to artists and professionals. We offer training workshops during the year. And we have the international development uh, aspect, which is uh, we are coordinators of Superstrada, which is the European and international network for contemporary circus and street art. We have around 140 members from 40 different countries. Uh, we also are members of On the Move, IETM, uh, Call for Cultural Action, and part of Digital League. So those are the main things that Arsena is doing throughout the year. At this moment, I think we have a little bit background about our three guest uh, speakers for today about your um, experience on dance. And also we know more about um, how you uh, your projects uh, engage with dance. And I think it's really a good chance for us to know more about the diversity of um, the theater practitioners in, in Europe, how they are coping with the, uh, they cope with the uh, COVID situation um, two years ago. And I'm sure that uh, there's more like um, experience to be shared later on in this um, particular talk. And I'm not sure whether is Martina back yet? Not yet? Okay, okay. Um, so, um, Malona, I, you, do you have any uh, further more about your uh, projects to share with us? Or we uh, go straight to the uh, experience of about um, your experience uh, with the uh, Digital Leap, your uh, participation in that particular project? Um, we can go directly to <laughs> the experience. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So. Okay. Yes. Uh, or do I need uh, to do? Is it easier for me to put a um, uh, Melta to uh, share with us about your experience first with the digital leap? That will be easier for. Would that be easier for you to share with us first? Yes, of course, I can, uh, I can share. I would gladly share. Yes. Uh, so uh, I had two encounters with Digital Leap. 
physically uh, in Prague and in Vilnius because only two uh, right now two out of four modules have passed. So in Prague, uh, I was uh, I was coming both as a participant and as a project coordinator from the Slovenia Dance Information Center, and we had many many uh, great uh, digital tools on how to work with social media channels, on how to uh, promote our content. And I think it was uh, beneficial for, for everyone because most of the people who participated there uh, were, including me, uh, were dancers or uh, circus artists. And many artistic people do not know uh, things about marketing, what kind of uh, target audience you have to create in order to promote your art. And some people are not even familiar with the channel. And uh, me as well, I didn't, for example, know knew all the algorithms of these social media channels. And they were explained, and we worked a lot with Instagram, for example. We learned something a little bit about TikTok. We learned about YouTube. Uh, there were many, many different seminars organized. Um, and I, I had the chance to actually act as a participant. Uh, but uh, in Vilnius, I was a project coordinator, so I, I just created everything, uh, which was also an interesting experience uh, because then I could see all the participants and I could also organize everything. So I watched everything from a bird view, I would say, uh, and it was it was also uh, uh, a challenging experience uh, to organize it, and uh, because the uh, it, it's really, really, um, we were lucky because the COVID, uh, the lockdown was over, so we could organize these seminars. Uh, but uh, the second module was focused on uh, augmented reality, uh, extended reality, you know, and VR. Uh, so we worked with those different tools and there were four groups. Uh, one of them were doing uh, uh, augmented reality uh, projects. Another one was working with motion capture costumes. The other one was working uh, with VR, and then uh, then the final one uh, was working with sound design. So there were all these different groups which were working on different projects, and they could actually try out those tools, which they, as artists, couldn't normally find it anywhere, and they maybe wouldn't even have these professionals in their field to explain how to use them to give them uh, all the background on how to work with these tools to promote their artwork. So for me, it was really interesting to see how artists, when they are given these tools, they, they become so creative. And uh, I, I, I mean, I was just watching the second module, but I wanted to be part of all of the groups. It would have been impossible, of course, to be at four places uh, all at once, but uh, it was really, really interesting experience as well. So I would say both of these experiences um, were really, really enriching and helped me both as a professional to, uh, to see uh, how I can incorporate more, uh, everything digitally, because some of the tools I learned in Prague in module one, I use this right now when I am uh, doing social media for Lithuania and Dance Information Center. So for me, it was also be, uh, beneficial as the uh, work, uh, work uh, progress. And another thing is that I learned how to become more creative as an artist by seeing how other artists work in the second module. So that was my uh, overall, I would say, experience. Yes, thank you very much for your sharing. And I see uh, Martina back. But before, I would like to also to ask a further question for um, Melta. And what is, uh, before you join this program, I, I, will you define yourself as, as a very digital person? Because obviously, at, maybe for some artists in Hong Kong, uh, they kind of like because of the pandemic, they push them to uh, explore more about uh, the digital arts or the uh, the relationship about digi uh, uh, digitized art and theater. But um, it really, if not because of the pandemic, maybe we won't have that kind of initiative. And I would like to know more uh, about your experience of um, how you you uh, you entered the world, uh, the digital world before um, 
the the pandemic and and will, will the pandemic a, a, a drive for you to uh, participate more active proactively in in that uh, area yes it definitely has changed on how i interact with digital tools because beforehand i only use uh, these social media platforms for myself mostly just uh, to see the news to read something maybe to post something but um, uh, like during covid everything uh, all the webinars seminars everything all the work had to be online so of course uh, using these learning tools helped me as well and then i i'm really glad that pandemic actually brought these um, interesting tools to work on for example um, people try to i think the whole um, thinking of, of a person now switched because right now if for example as an artist uh, i would like to create uh, an art piece i i would think okay am i going to do it online or am i going to do live beforehand i wouldn't have thought about it i would only do it live and uh, i wouldn't consider idea of doing it online and right now i i would say my, my many my many of my work aspects as well are online and um uh, another uh, thing is that um i think that for example i'm just quickly going to jump to the second module um it's really interesting because one of the groups uh which were doing projects they actually work with these online streaming tools um so i think they, their whole process was way quicker because they were familiar with these tools. Um, so I could say it also about myself that uh, I was really quick to understand how uh, how algorithms work, uh, how to uh, stream everything, uh, how to promote after Prague module, and then uh, during the second module, I understood that uh, I can actually uh, make my progress with these. XR, extended reality too. So hopefully I'm back and there won't be any interruptions uh, in the connection anymore, but we will see. That's online life. Uh, but uh, thank you, Milda, for, for your feedback. Uh, I heard at least uh, part of that. Uh, what I wanted to add about uh, the training modules, uh, it's I, actually Milda is a very interesting example of a participant and organizer in one person, but also of an artist and culture manager in one person, because uh, probably the biggest challenge, but also uh, the biggest enriching feature of the, of the modules within Digital Leap is the direct collaboration of culture managers with artists. And I think it was something, or it is something, what is very refreshing for both parts, because uh, we as promoters, managers, we understand better the needs of artists, their changed conditions, uh, uh, their way of creation through the modules. And uh, on the other hand, the artists, they uh, probably also learn something how to talk to us because sometimes it's very difficult also, you know, to promote artists uh, to get the right uh, formulation of the artistic vision and so on and so far. And these were things uh, which were trained uh, a lot uh, in the first uh, module where we were dealing a lot with uh, uh social uh media with marketing uh with branding uh as well and this was something what was part of both of the modules we have organized uh, so far because uh the participants they were divided into groups and they created something together and maybe Barbara can show some uh photos from the first module uh in Prague uh uh, you will see the participants, but also some simple exercises. We worked a lot with Instagram and with Insta stories, which were created uh, within within the module, and where artists collaborated together with uh, culture managers. So um, that was uh, really a very enriching experience. Uh, let's turn now to Eva uh who participated uh only as an artist uh, she hasn't anything to do with the organization or concept of the 
of the modules and she was part of the second module. Uh, so Eva, could you tell us maybe something about your motivation for joining such a training program, for spending five uh, days uh, in Vilnius with uh, quite a huge group of uh, other 30 uh, artists and culture managers? And what is your experience uh, from, from the module? What did you learn? Uh, so I was a part of the module too. And my main motivation was that before I heard about Digital Leap, I had a chance to be part of the project, which was more of a, one might say more commercial project, but I could uh, try the motion capture suit. And um, I was very amazed by it, uh, the capturing of the data. And uh, if you have those data, what everything you can do with it. So that was the main motivation to apply for the Digital Leap. And uh, then we were divided into four groups and uh, each of us brought idea of a project. And uh, luckily mine uh, idea of a project was chosen which was called uh, Dancing DNA, because I was very, I'm still very much interested in some kind of essential movement of the person, essential, one might say, essential gesture, something like a fingerprint. And uh, when we connected with the motion capture, there is also this moral aspect. These motion capture suits can be used in medicine and physiotherapy, how to help us more understand about the body but also it can kind of be used against us. You know, there can be sci-fi ideas about it, but also not. This may be something which is happening already. And uh, so I was also interested not only to try the technologies, but to meet artists who are interested in technologies, exchange ideas with it, and also meet people who are both involved in the technologies and in arts and uh, to discuss with them the world of the motion capture we are and especially also AI because how the AI can affect the work of us as an artist what everything is possible with it because I also realized after the digital leap how the technology can amplify the things a lot a lot either in a good or bad way right and uh, so I'm interesting to learn I was interested to learn from the people to gather the ideas and uh, possibly in the future talk about it in my works not only with the technology but with the dramaturgy and i was in the group we were like 10 11 people working on one idea actually we were like two choreographers who brought the same idea so we were two choreographers and 10 11 artists around us bringing a lot of thoughts and uh, but in the end we kind of agreed that what actually was interesting for us with the with the vr and motion capture was that technology is very something outside of the body of the person and it's very materialistic and how to actually use it to bring us back to more metaphysical topics and spirituality, uh, the opposite side of the spectrum. And yes, I guess that's everything for me now. Okay, thank you. Um... You also applied for the next uh, module uh, in Spain. So can you be now in, in France? France? Yeah, true, in France. So maybe you can share with us your expectation because uh, right after you, we will talk uh, with Paloma who is uh, involved in the preparation of the next module. So tell us uh, what are you expecting? Because this module will be connected with audiences. So, um, what are your expectations and uh, why do you want to continue in the module? Maybe it's also important to say that uh, we select artists uh, for the modules uh, through open course and uh, some of them, they are returning. So they, they, do, they participate in more modules and some of them, they participate only in one. So the group always is a little bit differently composed. So uh, Eva, tell us, uh, what are your expectations or what do you want to explore more uh, within this project? Yeah, I think during the pandemic, uh, artists realized that through the technology is one way how to connect, maybe the only way sometimes how to connect with the people and uh, share their work and uh, communicate with them. So I guess uh, still it's something which I'm very interested how to connect with the audience and especially how to 
or how to create the work that the people doesn't have to meet at the same time at one place also. Um, I guess, and also I'm very interested still between the exchange with other artists and something which is not uh, in between, you know, those small talks or, and uh, create new artistic cooperations or contacts also. Okay, thank you. So now it's Paloma's turn. Uh, you participated, Paloma, in both uh, the modules in Prague and uh, in Vilnius. Uh, so maybe you can compare uh, how was your experience from these two trainings. And then we turn also to the topic of, of your module. But let's uh, firstly reflect on uh, what was your experience from Prague and from Vilnius. So yeah, I got the opportunity to participate in both modules. Um, first of all, they were really well organized. It was a really nice group for both, but they were both very different in the way that they were organized through the week. The first one was more, even though we had a practical part that was the Instagram stories, we were divided in groups. The groups were very uh, mixed as there were like one person per country in the group. Um, and it was also like mixed with artists and organizers. So it was very interesting to see how artists can be so creative even with when you give them just a little task of creating a brand as a group. And it was interesting to see their process with, you know, the whole point of the first one was promoting your work in digital and virtual environment. And it was only about advice and how to understand those digital platforms. It wasn't just to give us like a to-do list of what to do. And like probably it was more advice and comprehension of those platforms so you can have the liberty to play with them and have better results to, to promote your work. So it was really interesting and me as starting as my professional career and also now working with communication, it was also helpful to see, to learn about the algorithms and tips that we don't necessarily uh, think about when we think about social media, like the insights or following a storyline with your brand, uh, having a calendar, you know, having this thread not, not to just post because you want to promote something that day. So that was really interesting. And also to see like the cooperation between all the international artists. And then the second one was also very unique because we were talking about XR, virtual reality. Uh, personally, I had never been in contact with any of those technologies. So I really learned from zero. So, and also it was very really interesting to see how some of the artists have brought their own project and how there were posts that were selected and how they transformed through that week and at the end presented something which was really interesting to me as not, not an artist, but as an organizer to see that process of taking an idea and, and producing it by the end of the week, it was interesting to see. And I also was in the group uh, witnessing the 10 people group, which was even more so difficult to see at first, but at the same time, it was also a nice challenge to really come together and to do something in just a week. So that was basically my experience with the module. We can maybe show a couple of photos from the second module. I will ask Barbara to show them. And uh, just to comment uh, what was uh, amazing uh, also in, in the Vilnius in the second module was uh, uh, the speed uh, under which uh, the final presentations were created because uh, after the first introductory day uh, when the, the whole group was divided into the four subgroups according to the topic. Uh, the artists, they had three days to learn to and to deepen their skills with the technologies selected for the topic of each group. 
uh, and then to prepare the final presentation. And actually, uh, this the speed was amazing because uh, uh, the final presentations they were like uh, small small creations uh, uh, done within three days. And uh, I think that was also something very inspiring for uh, organizing and fostering and supporting international collaboration. Because as I said, uh, of course, this, uh, this project is very much connected uh, with the digital shift uh, in performing arts. That's the main topic. But also it has very much to do uh, with international collaboration and the forms uh, which developed and which had to be developed also uh, during the pandemic uh, uh, in the last two years. So uh, that was something what was also very fruitful for, for us as culture managers to observe uh, um, how uh, the connections uh, among artists and culture managers worked and uh, how the topics uh, were processed. Uh, Maybe we can uh, say something uh, about uh, the upcoming module in, in France. Uh, Paloma, if you want to share with us something, uh, how you decided to uh, process the main topic, uh, uh, what do you prepare? I know it's quite far away because the last module will happen only at the beginning of next year in winter, in February, I think, in, during the biennial in Marseille. And uh, I will write uh, answer a question which appeared here. Uh, for this uh, project, uh, we select only artists uh, from the countries who are the organizers uh, of the Digital Leap project. Uh, but uh, we uh, have discussed already among the organizers that uh, it has such a potential, uh, this, uh, this project, that we would like to continue somehow our collaboration. It's so uh, enriching uh, not only for the artists, but also for the work in international relations uh, that we will try to uh, propose uh, kind of, uh, or some, some form of uh, continuation of the project. So back to France, but back to Artsena, back to uh, the preparation of the next module. So what can you tell us? What, what is not secret? Uh, tell us something from behind the scenes uh, of the module preparation. So it's still being developed, the program. We don't have anything set on stone yet, except that the, it's going to be in, in the first half of February. It's going to be between Marseille and Aix-en-Provence for the VIAC, for the Vienna and the VIAC. And it's going to be about reaching and engaging with, with audience through digital means. And we're going to try to make it as most experiential that we can because so far it's been the in between both theory and learning for some conference from um, people like from experts but we're going to try to make it more experiential and more physical so that's what i can say for now but more information will come soon definitely well, I hope to be able also to exchange some uh, knowledge about uh, the behavior of audiences, because of course uh, uh, the pandemic hasn't brought only change in uh, in artistic practices, but also in uh, in reactions and behavior of uh, of theater and performing arts audiences. So I hope this, there will be also some space uh, to look up uh, into some um, uh, research of audiences. Uh, so that's uh, th something what is also crucial to speak about uh, in connection with, uh, with the digital shift. Uh, maybe we can yet uh, uh, present a little bit what will be the third module about. We haven't any representative of our Spanish uh, partners here. Uh, but they called uh, their module expanding your practice at your computer desk desktop distribution strategies on the internet 3.0 so um, it's uh, it's uh, focused on distribution on the possibilities uh, of internet of uh, diverse platforms uh, and it will touch upon also on important topics uh, of uh, international taxation, of digital rights, 
licenses and so on and so far, which is also um, a little bit boring agenda probably, but uh, also very important for, for all these practices we are talking about. So that's the uh, first round of uh, questions and answers. And uh, now I would like to invite into our discussion our today's respondent, William Chan. William is uh, a performing arts critic uh, and researcher based in Hong Kong. Uh, he has been writing uh, reviews and articles on visual arts, dance and theater productions. Uh, since 1998, he worked as a project manager of, for International Association of Theatre Critics and was also editor for dance journal uh, published by Hong Kong Dance Alliance. And currently he has more roles. He's working as a lecturer. He's a jury member of Hong Kong Dance Awards and other awards. So um, he's, uh, he has a uh, huge experience uh, with uh, reflecting performing arts. So Vivian, what are your thoughts uh, about uh, what we heard our guests uh, on, the, on the project, uh, on the topics uh, we have uh, spoken about uh, so far? Okay, um, thank you very much um, for sharing. Um, I think it is a really interesting program. And what my, my first um, thought is I'm really angry um, to all of you because um, it is quite difficult to come together um, to have like intensive workshop face to face meeting with each other because like in Hong Kong and also in China, we're still having strict policy about uh, social distancing and, and it's really hard for us to organize anything that, uh, that have a large group of gathering. So um, especially when I, when I, when I was um, watching all the videos and all the, that because even in Hong Kong, uh, in the past two years, uh, when we have the COVID nineteen situation, um, some of the dancer or dance artists, um, they start to try um, picking up um, camera or using a mobile phone for for um, shooting dance videos or uh, working on different uh, video projects um, about performing arts. Uh, they also have to face um, situation that they couldn't. Um, have a group more than four people to uh, to do the shooting in outdoor. Indoor, they 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 might kind of um, do it secretly, but in outdoor, it is um, because it's, it, we have a strict um, regulation that we can't have a group of four people, uh, more than four people. Uh, if we work together, uh, they have to um, at least have one point five meters um, distancing. So it is really difficult for artists of Hong Kong, in Hong Kong to as, uh, ex accept if you are uh, in a company or a big company, they, they can do it um, in the theater when, when it is uh, available. But for individual artists, it is really hard. And my second thought is, um, I really agree that um, during the past two years, um, during the pandemic, we have a lot of chance to uh, reach out by using, um, by, by adopting the digitalization. We have the um, internet platform, which um, in the past, as, as uh, you, you may have encountered, you may haven't thought of um, really utilize it in, in maximum because your target audience is your local audience most of the time. But now um, because of the pandemic, it opens another window, another door, that it is more easy to reach out to, to the world, to people uh, in different countries. For example, if we don't have the pandemic, I can't imagine if we have this chance to, to um, speak to each other all over the continent, our countries in Europe. Um, and oh, But at the same time, uh, I also want to hear from you is, maybe is it related to the phase three um, workshop of the Digital Lib? Because um, when we are going to reach out to the world, that means uh, we actually, uh, it is a more competitive world. Uh, before we just have to compete with um, other companies um, that uh, within our, our local countries or cities. But now when we open up, 
um, we try to reach out, but at the same time, uh, all around the world, all the artists, all the, all the cultural um, organization, they also reach out. So I would like to hear um, from all of you how to deal with this, or are there any um, direction or are there any thoughts about this when you try to reach out um, using digital platform? Um, I, what are you looking for? Or is it still uh, looking at your local audience, just a different means of medium? Or you really want to take chance of this? For example, um, when you're talking about the social media, digital marketing, the, those platforms are all, all open to all around the world. So are you thinking about using these um, platform to reach out and to get in touch with um, more different, different kind of audience, but at the same time, at the same time, how do you see the, how, how, how can you, um, what do you think about the compet competi uh, competitive um, um, from different countries or, or other um, cultural organization? Maybe I, I just um, throw out these questions first. So who would like to start with the answer? Nilda, maybe? Yeah, sorry, uh, I thought I, yeah, uh, I can start. Um, I just, one thing crossed my mind. I was thinking that uh, creating content uh, right now for artists is, of course, if they can perform like in bigger groups, do their solos go outside? If they have a space, that's like one thing. But promoting it and distributing it is the whole other way. So I think the hardest part is for artists and me myself as an artist, I can see it for myself as well. Uh, whenever I dance, for example, if I post a video on Instagram or on Facebook, right? You only know that your friends are gonna see you, but you don't have, if, if for example, it's a pandemic situation, you can't just go and perform live and uh, you know engage with different people. You actually have to, have to think how to attract these people uh, from online platforms. So I think uh, right now there's this trend, uh, well not trend, but more, on a, more of a necessity uh, going around uh, for different um, organizations to work with ads manager. So there's Facebook and Instagram ads manager. And I think it's really, really, really important because it combines um, like it's actually a promotional uh, advertising where you promote either your page either your content and of course the hardest part is that you have to figure out how that works so for example i as an organizational uh, uh, person had to undergo well i wanted to undergo i applied for uh, ad manager courses i went there and right now i know how to promote uh, artists how to promote the funds that our organization creates but i think it's really really hard if you don't have these tools to just upload the video and expect to have this whole reach. So that's that's another thing that you have in order to distribute your content. If it's unless it's really really unique, you have to say uh, to and you have to know how to work these tools. Uh, the same goes with Google Ads. Um, you you just have to you have to know expand your digital knowledge on how to work with these ad systems. Yeah, maybe I would say uh, from the point of one of the partners of the project uh, that, um, uh, of course, all, all the like le level of the creation uh, and using all these technologies is uh, very expensive and expensive uh, stuff. Uh, we really uh, like uh, mostly in performing arts if we are not really very commercial um, organizations uh, we cannot compete with uh, i don't know computer games or all these industries uh, or film industry because uh, we never will have probably such recourse resources uh, uh, as these industries have but uh, the more we should um, uh, uh, develop uh, and grow in our skills, 
the more uh, we need uh, such projects uh, as Digital Leap is. Uh, and uh, that was our motivation actually to join this project because uh, with quite uh, small resources, uh, uh, we grow together with the participants. We also learn uh, not only the participants we select in the open calls, but uh, also we uh, as uh, the culture organizations uh, involved in the project. So that's first uh, remark uh, to your question. And second remark uh, is uh, something what is uh, the reality of today. Um, uh, our guests, three uh, ladies uh, today, uh, belong to younger generation than I belong to. And uh, I think uh, that uh, they are much more uh, living these uh, two lives, uh, the digital one and the real one, probably more than my generation. But uh, I think it's something what is here, uh, what uh, won't be gone when the COVID is over. It, uh, it has become really a part of our agenda probably forever. Uh, we will have to cope with it, uh, even though we may be resistant to it uh, more or less. And um, we have to take it as a fact. And uh, therefore, we need to understand uh, basic, uh, at least basic uh, rules of uh, how all these platforms work. Uh, they develop quickly. They change the rules quickly. So uh, one has to be really up to date all the time and follow what is new. But uh, still, I think there, there are some basic principles we try to include into the Prague module to explain uh, how YouTube works, how you can uh, really um, uh, improve your reach uh, through the videos, what should you upload, because it's also important to understand that uh, it's not one-to-one -one work, it's not uh, the same uh, what you upload uh, to online environments and what you present live. These are really two different things, uh, completely different. And uh, therefore I see a lot of sense in this project to understand really uh, what are the specifics of the digital and online environments and what is the proper content for this, either for promotion or for creation. And uh, what should stay as the core of the live meeting of a performer with uh, his or her spectator and um, what should be kept uh, for the life uh, and personal and physical meeting. And um, last remark maybe, um, what, I what I find really interesting uh, about this project, it's really uh, focused on dance and contemporary circus artists or these fields, which are much more connected with body and uh, physical presence uh, than for example, dramatic theater. And the more difficult is it, you know, also to create or to promote uh, uh, such works uh, and such creation in, uh, in digital platforms, uh, because uh, it's not based on text. Uh, it's really, uh, it has this uh, body or physical uh, feature in, in, in it. And uh, therefore I find it very challenging also the, the whole project. Uh, uh, but I see also um, uh, the sense in it. So um, maybe there are some other reactions uh, to the question. Eva, what do you think? Uh, I would go uh, back to the uh, content of which artist is creating, rather how we uh, share, uh, we use the technology to connect with the audience. Because I'm, I was thinking already before pandemic that there was, uh, because of the globalization and already the social media, we had access to a lot of, uh, to all main, to a lot of dance artists around the world. We could watch the videos and we could, uh, if I go to the core of the dance, which is a movement, uh, there was a trend that somehow some movement tendencies or waves took over the dancer's body over the world. And, uh, and now I'm kind of also like getting lost into how I can be inspired and get information about the movement from different cultures 
Uh, and I'm also seeing there is maybe uh, as a social media, they're always giving us some kind of directions, what we see, what we watch, right? So it's like I have I see this tendency that it's a still it's a big competition. Uh, you have to be original at the same time, but also people are getting to used to to some kind of images of the body. So I'm also like kind of getting lost uh, how to get all the informations and how to use it, how to not lose the myself as a person coming from this culture, from this historical background and uh, to work with the ideas. So there is a lot of options, big competitions, how to bring still your essence to it and work on it deeply. So not to be just outside with uh, all the information which are coming, but also work inside of yourself. I don't know if that's, uh, <laughs> if that's understandable what I'm trying to say, but uh, yeah, I feel like that sometimes the social media can also manipulate what then all general audience thinks, what is a dance? How the dance should look like? What the movement is? Uh, when also it's a losing this physical presence, right? Which is like the body has some kind of temperature. It can share the sweat. It can actually like share the energy of the emotion. So these are my thoughts. <laughs> Maybe and, more in a mess, but this yeah. is it. <laughs> and, and Eva, it's just about, I, I would like to also address a particular uh, uh, question to you as a choreographer, because we just mentioned about um, dance and a lot of like performance on, on physical, uh, uh, physical theater or, or because in a world of, um, of a digital um, platform, usually um, audience or the spectators in front of the screen, they don't have that kind of patience. You know, time, if time makes a piece of dance piece in particular very important because we can bear time on stage. But in particular on a screen, uh, I think for even though for the uh, uh, audience without, I, I'm not talking about only on age, it's because this particular device that makes us really impatient at some time, at some point. So I would like to ask Eva as a choreographer, how could, how can you deal with this especially time uh, element in a dance piece. And also, uh, how could you find the readiness of the uh, audience in front of a, a computer screen to be able to get into or be engaged with your um, dance uh, production or performances? So I guess it's also connected to what in the, if I create a dance performance or some dance content, it's in, I guess first thing that came to my mind is to think uh, what kind of online event is it, right? So uh, actually uh, I created last year a solo, which main idea I work with the time in the choreography. So I either move, move very fast or they're like very slow movements or either I even escape the stage and there is nothing and what was interesting for me because I was alone created this, this solo so I always created a part of it and I watched it on video and then I created a whole piece and I just watched it on the video that was the only way I could do it and actually somehow it's uh, the camera is static on one place but still it somehow works better than when the performance is shared live with the audience even though it has 12 minutes so there was like kind of even more stretch of the time than I would ever do before. How I would stretch it, how fast I can do, uh, how much I can overwhelm people to actually give them the contrast of like nothing <laughs> or yeah, actually nothing or very slow um, time passing very slow. Um, which I'm interested in is also like this social media you now we're bringing like people are just like, want again again information how to they're just scrolling no tiktok or instagram this tv video so it's very short short pieces of dance and i'm also interested how it's affecting the dancer they training or, or perceiving the time in their movement because then the dancers dance for 30 seconds and then 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 that's it right so um it's uh, this uh, time struggle also overall thinking how you can get into the information and still our mind kind of analyze the information so fast, really deeply. So it's kind of superficial thing, which maybe 
uh, people who are more on the social media and perceiving uh, the dance are getting of it. So it's an uh, interesting challenge how to create for, uh, for uh, digital platforms and uh, to bring people to different sense of the time because the screen is inside of their living room, right? Or inside of the office when they have all their, all their uh, impulses to get their attention. So, yeah. Yes, yes. And any feedbacks from uh, Milta or um, uh, Panoma in particular about the questions about time um, or the audience patient <laughs> for bringing a digital program online? Any other thoughts, um, Milta? I can, I can actually. If, uh, want, I want to say something, and I think it will be also the answer to uh, uh, Jimmy's question, if I'm correct, about uh, difference between live performance and video performance. So I think that when we mo move uh, to digitalized world, when all of us as artists, as uh, organizers, had to do this. Uh, we had to adapt to these technologies, and we, there was such a, a overflow of information, and we have information overflow um, each day, and our attention span is getting way worse, and we also can see it uh, from younger generation. Uh, it's scientifically proven that due to their time spent on, for example, social media, their time span is not as good as uh, people who are from older generations. So I, I, I would say that uh, digital world has both positive and negative aspects. So maybe uh, uh, like the time you spend on social media uh, can contribute to like deterioration of your uh, attention span. But for example, uh, when it comes to uh, watching content and if you watch it not live, but you watch it online, you can always, uh, if there is, uh, content that you can watch later you can just stop you can uh, re uh, replay everything uh, you can stop at certain places you can learn from these things and you can just repeat all over uh, all of this over again but if you go to live performance maybe it will be more uh, maybe you would feel more in person with a person who is dancing maybe you would be more touched because you can see a person and you can see his emotions way cl clearer at one point but at the other point it's only one time you see because usually you can't film it unless you can film it and then you can watch it later so technology can either help us and it can also not help us in a way that uh, we just have this all of this information overload and there are so many things that are being um, published that sometimes you don't even see the information that it would actually be super uh, uh, super beneficial for you to learn because you can't even see it through all of these means. So I think the the only thing what I could say about the time management and uh, things we spend on social media and how to work with these tools is that uh, up to a person to know what they are using these mediums for and how they use it. It's really, really important. Yes, and, and you know, what I think is e an evil function of uh, the, the YouTube is to, you, you, you know, you can fast forward um, one uh, uh, for a few more seconds, then you can fast forward it. And, and it, it is it really an evil function for me because it's very tempting for you to look into our performance with a faster speed. So you can enjoy more, but it, but at the same time it cre it creates and a, a really another um, uh, it's not really that way to enjoy a performance uh, online, even though we can speed up. But but it creates a, a kind of temptation for the audience to um, to receive a, a, a performance in in some other. Uh, perception of time that really makes me feel not really comfortable at all and also for the not paying respect to the work and also for the artists as well and uh, Martina I, I think we do have a question for um, from our audience uh, sometime before yes uh, oh yeah we should get back uh, to the question from the beginning uh, 
It's a question for Milda, but uh, anyone can answer. How do you think the difference meaning between dance video to video dance project from reality space to digital inter interference? I think you mean interface. I think you mean interface. interface. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Maybe um, Melta, it, uh, can you share? Could you uh, share some thoughts with us first? Um, yes, of course. Uh, so, uh, if I understood correctly, what is the uh, difference between video and then uh, digital interface, right? Of it. Wait, I'm just gonna read it one, one more I time. I think Jimmy's so question is because we are quite familiar of watching dance video because it's already a, an established genre. But um, I think it's uh, his question is what's the difference or you think about the difference between a dance video to this kind of video dance project online? Because it's, um, oh. this is a new genre, I guess, um, uh, to yeah. the audience. Yeah, I think. Um, it's the way different tools are being used because if you just post a video uh, again it's not gonna probably reach many people but if you think about incorporating different tools as for example uh, we work uh, on instagram during frag mojo we work with these distribution tools if you know how to promote your content more efficiently you know how to um how to distribute it and the difference is maybe not from the point of uh like spectators view maybe uh, they don't think about it consciously because i think the mo the difference uh the artist makes the difference right how he promotes his art content uh, the online videos or does he incorporate other tools so i think the the main difference is um how they what kind of decisions they make to release this uh, video let's say online to public so th that these are my remarks yes maybe eva can can share with us her thoughts uh, what comes to my mind uh, reading this question is something what we discussed also in uh, in recording of uh, theater shows uh, that uh, really when you are creating um, a recording, uh, like I mean in professional way, it's literally to translate the theater language into the film language. So I think here we are touching kind of a border or a kind of a territory in between dance, live dance and uh, cinema creation or where we are somehow uh, with um, uh, the online projects uh, in dance, and it's kind of new, like experimental space uh, to be to be developed and to discover to be discovered. But Eva, tell us uh, what do you think about, uh, or what what are your remarks uh, to this question? Yeah, I think it's for me. It's like if there are the tools, digital tools, how to capture dance. It's like, for me mainly, it's like that dancers take those tools and use them. So it's the eye of the, uh, of the artists uh, dancing with the tools, I would say, not just using them. How, uh, how the eye is not just camera, but is a dance, dancer body, which is capturing and moving the space and reshaping the space or, or the body. Which then brings me to the digital leap that we can actually try the technologies and learn them. And if you find that actually you can a little bit understand it, you can like deep your education in them, then bring new things, original things to the to the world. Oh, so shortly for me. Yes, I, I quite agree with what uh, Eva just mentioned because technology, I think, or for that particular media in what we, we discuss or share in this evening is it becomes uh, really part of the, it actually acts as a dancer at some point. So it's not really a tool that helping you to address more audience. It's actually be engaged with 
the work itself. So I think it's really um, another mindset for uh, creators and also for the, uh, dance partic uh, participants uh, or uh, practitioners to think how to make use of the digital tool. And also, I I'm, I have a curious question maybe for um, the our speakers today, and it's about resources because in 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 Hong Kong, uh, maybe William could uh, share about about your thoughts with us as well of the, of the situation in Hong Kong, because um, we do have a, a kind of uh, or a lot more resources to um, uh, from the government to uh, encourage our artists to do more work uh, with the technology or with some um, digital uh, uh, medias. But I'm not sure whether um, in the situation the situation in Europe will will that be the same case uh, because of the pandemic more resources uh, uh, will be uh, addressed to uh, this particular area so as to encourage uh, your dancers or uh, uh, practitioners to explore more on this area. And um, before that, I think uh, maybe William, do you have any thoughts about Hong Kong, um, the situation now? Before? Uh, I, I think about like the art technology we are now is quite uh, a hot topic in Hong Kong um, because we are developing um, new infrastructure, new theatre that would uh, incorporate with the so-called latest technology uh, for performing arts. Um, but I think I think it's the time difference. Like like at the time when when I was studying, actually I I have studying. Um, a little bit on digital media when when um, ten years ago, um, at that time, not many dancers or performing artists are really interested in working with technology, just a few. But nowadays, many um, maybe it's a, it's a new generation, as you may agree, or or like our um, young ladies here, um, they grow grow up with technologies. So I can also see like even in Hong Kong, they are young artists, dance artists. Um, they are really eager to, to work with technology, trying um, like motion capture or trying the VR technology by herself. Um, but that doesn't that, that didn't happen like, like 10 years before. Um, one of the reasons is because the technology is cheaper now, it's more easy to assess. Another uh, reason what I'm, I was thinking is because they grow up with the technology. Um, for example, like they grow up with social medias, um, uh, World Wide Web. Um, they, they know about uh, the visual language. They know about or they, they at least they don't afraid of uh, working with technologies. Um, but in Hong Kong, um, we still uh, in a transition, I would say like in a more a transitional period, um, more uh, more um, computer geeks are more interested in performing arts uh, and also performing artists. They're more more eager to work with them. So now in Hong Kong, we have we can see more collaboration between um, like um, technical people and also creative people. Um, but I, I don't know if in Europe is it is it start already or, or also is it in in some kind of similar transition period? Maybe maybe um I'll let you um to share with us. I will tell you about uh, our country about Czech Republic. It's already over, <laughs> but uh, no, it's kind of joke. But um, uh, we had uh, special funding for online experiments and creations and uh, experiments with uh, digital and uh, all these technologies uh, during the period of the biggest restrictions when really artists and theaters weren't able to perform live and uh, they needed to be in touch with their audiences and they used uh, whatever they had, but they didn't have the skills, they didn't have the resources to do it. So there was a special program launched uh, last year, uh, but it was an annual program. And um, as we are now uh, in normal operation, you can go to theaters without showing uh, your COVID pass. You don't need to wear a mask. Uh, we are really um, in normal operation. This uh, support is uh, not provided anymore. But I think it's a pity because um, as, I, as I mentioned before, my uh, my uh, deep uh, 
um, uh, belief is that uh, all this digital agenda will stay with us. Uh, we will need to to keep it in uh, uh, in our work, uh, either as promoters or as artists, uh, and it should be explored and developed uh, further. But uh, I mentioned just one particular example uh, from my country. I think it uh, it uh, will be very different uh, in various European countries. So far, uh, or as far as I know, um, France uh, is one of the leaders in supporting uh, and developing uh, this kind of uh, experiments. Uh, so I guess there will be some funding for that. And uh, I'm not sure about the other countries. I think it was very much connected with the with the lockdowns uh, during COVID. But maybe Madame Paloma can tell us more. Um, during uh, the pandemic, uh, Lithuanian um, did it, Lithuanian artists only got uh, really really small fees uh, to perform well to practice on their own, which is not actually enough to sustain their lifestyle. Uh, which they were living. So, um, yeah, we try to be as uh, we try to implement these practices as France did, for example. But still, it's really I think it's a it was an issue right now. Everything is of course back to to life as many uh, European countries. Um, but but I I also think that there is way more space to improve, and it's it's up to governments to decide whether they want to fund artists more or not. And I think what lacks is that more support for the artists, for sure. So that was really um, sometimes uh, difficult to see that, for example, a professional ballet dancer has to uh, work a, a remote job, has to switch his uh, career in one way just to uh, make a living. So I think uh, for some artists, it was really, really hard. If it was the only thing, uh, they that uh, had that kept their income flow, and if they didn't uh, have any other income uh, or they didn't have any savings, I think uh, yeah they, they struggled uh, for sure. Aloma, would you like to share? Yeah. So as I was saying, that here in France, we like there's a lot of incentives and support for artists to create, but also depends on the field like it varies from theater to dance to circus. And I feel maybe in circus, it's not always very, uh, there's not as much incentive for support. Yeah. And it yeah. depends, and also yeah. I feel like for new, technology, uh, for new technologies, sometimes artists are also a bit hesitant to try because they're very, like they hold on a lot to live performance, especially in circus as it depends so much on like, uh, like reactions in the moment and body movement. So I feel we're still in a transition time. It, even though there's some pieces and some artists that are really trying to merge them together and are becoming more curious to integrate it and find out more. But yeah, that's how I see it. Yes, I'm really curious about how circus because circus for me is uh, is about the atmosphere and also the you know the whole engagement. Of you know, Bernice, actually, uh, one of the greatest examples in the Vilnius module was uh, like French uh, contemporary circus, and uh, there was a uh, an artist uh, who was uh, one of the mentors, and it was very uh, interesting. Uh, uh, what they presented um, uh, from their uh, VR creation. Uh, I, but uh, yeah, she was quite uh, sincere uh, with uh, explaining that it was really very long and hard process also to discover how to work with the technologies. It's not like that uh, you have money, you have the technologies and you know immediately uh, how to create with it. And maybe it's uh, it's the answer for the question we have here in the Q&A session, uh, how to transform the life art uh, and performance art project into digital one. Um, that's what we mentioned already in the marketing part. Uh, it's, it's not one-to-one, -one. it cannot be. It's really, 
something different uh, to create for uh, live audiences which are present at uh, the same moment in the same space and uh, it's different to create for digital audiences uh, uh, we talked about the the time but the space is also important and um, i know that uh, there are many like uh, vr and other projects popping up uh, and uh, they bring like new quality to performing arts uh, I saw uh, recently kind of contemporary drama uh, transformed into a VR project and it was talking about traumas. And actually the format of, uh, of VR was very appropriate because uh, all this intimacy, which was uh, in, in the characters, which were sharing their traumas uh, with the spectator, this one-to-one -one relation, it was very appropriate to the topic which was chosen for the, for the whole performance. So actually, I think uh, we are exploring new paths and new, new relations with uh, the spectator, a new way how to uh, send some message, uh, how to share some content, some ideas, some questions, some depths. Uh, so um, it's, uh, it's a difficult way to go. <laughs> and I think Eva, do you, ha you have final remarks for us? I just wanted to get back to William's question about how uh, European art artists have access to the technologies. Uh, because yeah, there is this, uh, it's already happened to me that actually people from digital media or IT, they actually wrote to me or asked me to, to cooperate with them and then I, how I get in touch with the technologies. So I think it's, there is all this world about how the institution are br bringing up a, a space for creation, but I think it's also starting these small collaborations where there is a big interest between these people who are working uh, with the body and people from digital media very much interested in the body. And it's something like about this passion and interest and discovery about the new world together, which can then lead you to actually create the project and ask for money and keep on going. So, uh, and it helped, and it happened to me like with people who are maybe working, yeah, with different kind of uh, people from digital media ask me already before a pandemic. And that's what brought me as an artist to digital media. So it was not me coming there from my personal experience. Okay, I think our time uh, is slowly over. Before, uh, I will give floor to Bernice to uh, invite maybe for the last uh, talk we will have this week. I would like to ask it, Barbara, to illustrate the last words with a video. We shot uh, on the occasion of the of the of the World Dance Day, uh, organized by the International Theatre Institute in 2020. So it was the first year of uh, lockdowns, and uh, I remembered uh, this video because uh, Eva was mentioning uh, uh, the different uh, images uh, of body, uh, the expected images, and the other images. Uh, of, uh, of dancing bodies. And I think this video illustrates it very well because it's showing dancers under the strictest uh, lockdown and what everything they did and how they danced uh, uh, in their homes, in their, in their venues uh, uh, during lockdown. So Bernice, uh, I give over to you and thank you very much and see you again on Wednesday in the last talk. Yes, thank you so much, Panoma, Eva, and also Melta and William and Martina for this wonderful uh, collaboration and a great chance. I have to thank for this digital platform so we can get together, even though we're, we're um, not able to meet each other in person, but still we can exchange a lot of uh, inspiration and also experience uh, during the pandemic. So it brings to our uh, last talk uh, on Wednesday about the uh, performing arts online during the COVID. And of course, we're going to explore further about the post COVID year, how uh, performing arts online is going to uh, bring more inspiration to us or um, what's the future development of um, 
uh, performing arts online. So uh, stay tuned with us for the uh, last talk. And I do think for, uh, because one of our participants, uh, 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 audience, uh, for this evening ask whether there will be a collaboration or international um, acceptance of uh, the digital leap uh, for <laughs> maybe for the future. But I'm really looking forward if we do have chance to work with um, the Arts and Theatre Institute in Prague, maybe we could explore for the uh, possibility to bring this program maybe for an Asian version in, in in um, it's another side of the world. So uh, we could be able to uh, learn more from uh, the Europe uh, artists and also your experience. So uh, thank you very much for everyone. And we're looking forward to see you all on uh, Wednesday. So uh, have a good evening and a good afternoon. Um, stay health and uh, be well. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you very much, bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye.